Hi there, and welcome to Tree of Life Nursery's virtual workshop. It's nice to see you. My name is Emily Rogers. I work at the retail store Casa La Paz. If we haven't met before, it's nice to meet you. And if you're a familiar face, it's nice to see you. Today we have a wonderful talk by Mike Evans. He's gonna be giving the low down dirt on mulch. It's very educational. I learned a lot and I hope you do too. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Okay, hello, good morning. Here we are at Tree of Life Nursery and we are going to cover today um, a topic that is long overdue and the title is The Low Down Dirt on Mulch. I am Mike Evans, this is Dakota the nursery dog. We have Emily on the other side of the camera and we're gonna do our best to make a concise message about the low down dirt on mulch. So, Dirt is what you have all over on the ground. Soil is where plants grow. The difference being that soil has been built by plants and by the elements and by time in order to support plant growth. We'll get into that in a minute. Mulch, uh, by today's standards or definitions, typically means some sort of covering on the surface of the soil. And usually it is thought to be an organic mulch. So I know that what we're going to really focus on is the type of covering that you would put on the soil in a garden. But before we get to that simplicity of the, of the, the matter, let's talk about covering soil at all. So there are two areas in the garden and outside the garden in your world of outdoors. And from the standpoint of agriculture, uh, they are called crop and non-crop. So on a farm, the crop would be the fields and the non-crop would be the roads. So in your garden, you would have crop and non-crop, the crop being the garden itself where the plants are and the non-crop areas, for lack of another term, the technical term being non-crop, that would be your paths or your uh, patio or anything that does not support plant growth. So there is a use for top dressing or covering mulch in non-crop areas. And that could be gravel, like you might see in the foreground right here, technically is non-crop gravel road with an aggregate top dress being three quarter inch crushed gravel. We don't intend to grow plants there. You could also use organic mulch. When I say organic, I mean that it is derived from plant material and was once alive. We don't use the term inorganic mulch uh, because it sort of sounds like something uh, wrong and scary. So let's call it mineral top dress or mineral mulch in the case of rock. I guess in the case of ground up rubber tires and other trashy materials that have been promoted as top dress or mulch, we could use the word inorganic, but I don't even want to consider those as options because I think that that's just a really bad idea all the way around. Anything that is already a pollutant, you don't want to put on your soil. So you have crop and non-crop, and you have organic and mineral, as far as your choices for top dress. Now you've, rec you've um, noticed that I continually say top dress rather than mulch. In the old school definition of mulch, it was to cover the soil with an organic material, green manure or some kind of crop that you could then turn in and now it becomes compost. So the difference between mulch and compost in the general sense in today's world is that mulch is on the surface of the soil and compost is incorporated in and in fact mulch can be turned in and become compost. The other reason I like the word top dress is that it more implies a finish on the garden. And another term in the ecological world of uh, plants and ecosystems would be leaf litter or forest duff. So you see, God has been in the business of making mulch for a long, long time. And 
how he does it is that plants drop leaves and twigs and organic material from the forest, from the chaparral, even a grassland that has annuals and dye in season, produces material from the plants themselves that fall to the earth, dying and dead, leaves, etc. And as they decompose and as they form layers on the surface, this becomes a beautiful forest duff or leaf litter or top dress natural that the plants produce for themselves. And that is your goal and my goal in our gardens is to produce and e make an ecosystem uh, in miniature that has all the components, shrubs, trees, grasses, forbs, bare earth, mounds, rocks, sticks, etc. And as the plants mature and grow out, the low branches shade the root zone and the low branches drop leaves onto the root zone and you have this wonderful top dress which nature has provided herself with the plants making their own mulch as it were. The scary thing about importing mulch from outside onto your garden is that now you are bringing something foreign and unless it's good, unless it's excellent, you can cause harm to your garden. So by review, we have crop and non-crop, and we have organic and mineral as your choices in mulch. Let's go to non-crop for just a second. The quality of the material is more about the visual and its ability to keep plants from growing. You don't want weeds in your paths, patios, playgrounds, parking lots, wherever you're using a top dress, whether it be mineral or organic, so you would, if it's organic, you would pile it up thick and it could be of inferior quality uh, because the point is to smother weeds by pre preventing sunlight from hitting the, the surface of the soil. Weed seeds need sunlight to germinate and, from, and also just to smother them beneath such a thick layer of, of uh, organic mulch that they don't germinate and grow. If you put that same amount or that same kind of top dress or mulch on your crop area, you would have the same effect. Nothing would grow. In fact, nothing would uh, uh, sprout from seed. And it may, in fact, be very harmful to the plants that you have put in from containers. So anytime we bring mulch or top dress onto a site from a foreign source, we have to be very careful that we know our intention. And let's go to crop. So the idea behind top dress or mulch, organic, or mineral, mineral meaning aggregate, could be decorative stones, pebbles, tiny little um, decomposed granites. You could have it in drifts. You can combine it in with organic mulch in little areas of the garden so that your uh, ground is telling its own story. But whether organic or mineral, it certainly can do no harm. We need to have the idea that I don't want to do any harm to my garden. And of course, you want it to benefit your garden. So the reasons that mulch are promoted so heavily in these days are for water conservation and to discourage weeds. Throw in a little bonus that it kind of looks clean and tidy and organized and people are used to it. But I don't really hear as one of the criteria and to promote healthy plants. And unfortunately, often when I see mulch applied wrong or the wrong mulch applied into the garden, we see uh, kind of none of the above. Water conservation it doesn't work because the mulch uh, repels water when it gets dry. We'll get into that in a second. Weeds do come through it. And sometimes weed seeds come in with the mulch. That's really bad. And then, of course, it doesn't look so great because it's of inferior quality on arrival. And then the plants do poorly, and it's a loser. The whole thing turned into a bust. Why did we get into this situation where we see mulch everywhere? OK, this is an interesting idea, because years ago, when you wanted to apply an organic top dress to a garden, you had to buy it in bags which was expensive, so you did so sparingly and you found high quality material at the nurseries. Or you might be able to find at some local stable some of the shavings and the composted manure products that came out, but that was 
sketchy because it had salts in it unless it was properly leashed and it was fairly fine textured and didn't have great qualities as a top dress. Or you could get mushroom compost, which was similar to what I've just described, except it was the used medium that came out of mushroom farms after they were finished growing mushrooms. That was very good material. Why the abundance of organic mulch all of a sudden? Well, in California, about 20 years ago, don't quote me on that, but it seems like a while back, we passed a law that said green waste cannot go into the landfill. That's a good law. So we started separating green waste and treating it on its own as its own product, which meant grinding it up through a hammer mill, through uh, sifters and um, screens, and producing this ground up green waste from everything that came out of the garden, prunings, grass clippings, leaf rakings, everything organic that came out of the landscape went into a green waste facility and was ground up and turned into, wow, mulch. And there's this overabundance of mulch available way more than society could use. So it started to be promoted as the, one of the great answers to water conservation. Don't buy it. It will keep moisture in the soil better than a soil that is without it for a certain amount of time. But unless it's applied properly and unless it's the right kind of mulch, you can do more harm than good with much of the green waste that comes out of those facilities because, let's put it this way, so often it's free, that's too expensive if it's going to ruin your garden. And what is the type of mulch that I am speaking so poorly of at this point in time? It is the organic material that is produced at the green waste facility that has, and now listen, this is, this is original, and if I'm wrong, I'll apologize in a year or two when I discover that it's not right, but I've been thinking about this for 10 years, and I think we've got this right. When you look at the composition of the organic material that you intend to apply onto your garden, if it has all of the above, all of the above, or below, following, the next thing I'm going to say, if it has all of these, be careful. Sticks, strings, flakes, and dust. Now we're talking about the composition based on particle size, particle shape, the constitution of this material. Sticks, little twigs and broken up pieces of wood, obviously. Strings, stringy bark, as from eucalyptus, melaleuca, other ornamental plants from Southern California, redwood, things that make strings, okay, long, matty, angel hair type stuff. Flakes, that would look like sawdust. Flakes, by the way, are pretty cool on their own. If you go under an oak tree, the entire top dress, leaf mulch, leaf forest duff, leaf litter is oak leaves, which are all flakes, and it's both beautiful, preserves water, cuts down on weed growth, and functions as a long-term solution to that plant's nutritional needs. So that works by themselves. And then dust. Dust, why would you put dust on top of your soil? Well, if you had a little seed bed and you were growing some pansies or some little carrots or something like that, and you wanted some very fine sawdust to go in on top and sort of hold the moisture, that would be a top dress that you would carefully select on its own. But when dust, let's go back in order, sticks, strings, flakes, and dust, when they are combined in a organic material that you intend to apply to your soil, when you put it down, you can see, uh-oh, two inches thick, three inches thick, over time, and it doesn't take long, this material forms a mat. And it just binds up on itself because of these particle sizes all kind of cooperating and saying, hey, let's just get together and make an impenetrable mat of organic material, two to three inches thick, however deep you put it, so that when we, when they, we, all these materials, they're talking to each other as one, dry out, water can't get through us. So uh, I have seen, and you possibly as well, these mats of mulch actually float. I came onto a garden site where the plants beneath were suffering from drought, from no water getting into the soil because the mulch was running all the sprinkler water off. Well, I stuck a bubbler 
and some hoses under the mulch in order to try to s saturate the soil beneath, and the mulch started to float like a mattress on the sea. You know, it was, it was a terrible sight. And it was cracking, and it was heaving, and it was humping up, and it wouldn't break up. It's an impenetrable mat. So the word hydrophobic describes afraid of water, which is the word that we use to describe the feathers on a duck's back. When your top dress or mulch, organic, contains stick strings, flakes, and dust, and it mats together, it becomes hydrophobic. And when it dries out, it's almost impossible to get it wet again. It runs water off, it floats, and you don't know, but tell, I'll tell you right now, the soil beneath is either getting bone dry because of time and weather, or it is staying so wet because this mulch doesn't breathe, doesn't allow air exchange, that your plants are not doing well. That's physical. If you want to go to chemical, it's also uh, using nitrogen to break down which is robbing your soil and your plants from a very, very necessary plant food, nitrogen. If you want to go to biological, it may have pathogens at this point, or at least saprophytes. These are the fungi and the bacteria that eat away at dead material. Uh, so it's trying to compost itself. And if some of your branches and your leaves are laying down in it or on it, here come these microbes that are eating away at the dead material, which is the mulch. It, they don't always distinguish between dead and alive, and they'll just chomp right through your little twigs and start to have branch dieback and other problems from that. That's the, that's the biological, not to mention that they may have already um, engendered pathogens and bad guy fungi and bacteria, which um, came in on that mulch. So both from a physical, the, the actual constitution, chemical, and biological point of view, that mulch, though it may be cheap or free, is too expensive because it's going to ruin your garden. And it's used all too often. So we have a saying around here, real friends don't let friends use inferior mulch or top dress. So stay away from stick strings, flakes, and dust. So let's look at each one of those. By themselves, they tend to work, but let's apply it properly. Sticks, yeah, let's, let's stay away from ground up pallets and old furniture and wood boxes. This is available. It's just splintery junk. You don't really think you're going to use that and make your garden pretty. But if you were to use a component of all chunky sticks, it would work. But what would be better, and perfect by the way, and beautiful, would be redwood bark, which is expensive and comes from redwood mills where lumber is processed from timber, and so there's an environmental and an ecological cost to this because that's 500 miles away, and it's a horticultural product available to us, and it can be used sparingly out of bags in small areas and qualifies in the term in the in the in the sort of category of sticks even though it's more like chunks so chunks sticks all by themselves very good strings all by themselves some people are very keen on what's called gorilla hair again this is redwood it's from the bark it's part of the lumber uh, production process it's set aside for horticultural use and it, it and the word gorilla hair describes it um, it can be placed on the surface of the soil. It, is, um, it can dry out and, ha and cause some problems, but at least it's uh, all the same size and shape, and it does let water through readily, and it is an effective mulch, um, especially if it's a garden that has sort of a woodland or a shade or a moist feeling. If you have chaparral plants and other Southern California plants which are of a dry nature and you pile it up with gorilla hair, in my opinion, that looks a little bit odd. I think a mineral mulch of decomposed granite, little drifts of redwood chunks, maybe some oak leaves, and then some bare dirt would be just fine. Okay, so we've got sticks and strings. Flakes, you know, for finer materials, smaller plants, seed beds, you go in with some um, nitrilized sawdust or just some, some, some good 
uh, soil amendment which looks like sawdust. It's very fine in texture, but it's all uniform particle size and shape. This would be good in a seed bed or in a flower bed using small plants. And then dust, let's just avoid dust altogether. We don't need it even by itself. So when you have any of these components uh, or shapes and sizes of the plant, of the um, uh, mulch materials by themselves, they tend to work okay. And look at, this is just like nature. If you go into the floor of a redwood forest, it's all redwood leaves and twigs. It's very uniform. It would be considered sticks. Maybe a, you could call them a few flakes, but actually the little needles of the redwoods are more like small sticks. So it's chunky. If you went under an oak tree, you'd find all oak leaves. If you went under Manzanita Chaparral Forest, you'd find chunks and leaves and twigs that allow water to go through and then air to follow the water into the soil. It would never bind up on itself. So the main problem with organic top dress of inferior quality, <laughs> listen, you've been listening for 15 minutes, I'm finally getting to the point. The main point is if it binds up on itself and forms an impenetrable mat, it will do your garden harm. Let's go to chemical really quickly here. Organic material in the soil requires nitrogen in order to break down. That's part of its, that's what helps it break down in addition to the microbes that are working away at it, the bacteria and the fun, fungi and the insects that are chewing on it and the tiny little microscopic insects as well. So this whole life, world under your soil is, is, is forming better soil, use, breaking down organics using nitrogen and then again, once it's broke down, actually providing nitrogen back to your plant. We can get into more detail about atmospheric nitrogen and where it comes from and how it gets there and everything. But just let's go, let's get simple here. A little oak leaf takes a season or two to break down. A big chunk of oak that fell out of the tree, you know, a branch that broke off is going to take decades to break down. But eventually they're going to turn into compost, soil, organic material that will feed roots. The big ones take longer. So if your mulch, your top dress, is fine in texture, it won't last that long, it will break down. But that's okay, because remember the point is for to cultivate a garden that has low branches and has is creating its own top dress by dropping leaves in its own root zone. So fine texture in small areas on fine gardens is just fine. If you have a center parkway down some four lane highway and you've got a line of trees, and you're just trying to, to uh, prevent weeds and pretty it up and prevent some of the erosion that might take place during rainfall events. And uh, basically it's almost a non-crop area. Of course the trees are the crop, but it's almost a non-crop area. It's 50 year old trees, old root zone, you know, funky center median. Now that, that mulch material can be coarse, more coarse. So reusing green material that comes out of the garden is a great idea. I'm not against, or, nor should anyone be against the idea of reutilizing the ground up material that comes out of our landscapes, the green waste. But we have to be careful that we don't use palms, palm seed, mm, grasses, manures. Uh, many of the oily uh, plants like eucalyptus and plants in that family have, especially when the gr ground up green material is fresh, have um, terpenes and other strange uh, elements that, that actually are toxic at first, especially. So now you're saying, Mike, how can I be so selective when I uh, choose a mulch? Well, make your own out of leaf mulch, make your own compost, take your prunings from healthy wood and cut them up into fine bits and turn them a little bit and have them off to the side and slowly over a couple months period, they go from just green sticks to brown sticks to soft brown sticks to top dress. You can also do the smell test um, anywhere you go. If it stinks <laughs> like ammonia or any other un undesirable smell, it's not good, period. It doesn't smell good, bad, it should smell like earth. Um, or if you have a tree of your own pruned and the uh, pruner has a big grinder and, it's, and they're gonna you know, run the branches through, what kind of tree is it? Hardwood tend to work really well as top dress 
when ground up, elm, alder, ash, sycamore. Uh, th these, these tree species, which are abundant in the ornamental landscape of Southern California, tend to work very well uh, when they're ground up into chunks and put back on the soil as a top dress. You should leave it sit for a couple months or so to try to get some of the, the moisture and the green out of it so that it's not just like right out of the chipper onto the soil. Unless it's a non-crop area, right out of the chipper, right onto the soil, no problem. There's so many little hummingbirds that are just like chirping away over here. It's absolutely glorious day here. The manzanitas are in bloom and we'll be taking a walk around in just a minute. But I'm, I'm, I hope we're, we're making some progress here on the idea that chunks are good, small half inch size, depth. You hear these three inch, four inch, that's gonna smother a lot of plants. I think all you're really trying to do is cover the soil enough to preserve moisture beneath and discourage weed growth in as much as you've cut off the light source and some of the heat source to the top of the soil. So as a general rule, one to two inches will be plenty, especially if it's a mulch that can breathe and allow air and water to flow freely back and forth through it on every irrigation. To apply top dress or not to apply top dress? That is the question. Don't forget, in creating habitat using California native plants, we have to remember our native pollinators. And many of them are bee species, which are unique and many endemic native only to our area. California has several hundred species of bee which are key in pollinating native plants. And many of them are so tiny, that's a fly right there, but <laughs> an actual fly came in on cue here. Right there, see him? Right there, that's a canyon fly. Uh, that they are uh, unique pollinators to individual plant types. And we have to accommodate them in our gardens, and here's the deal. They don't nest in colonies like the honeybee that we're used to with thousands of individuals forming a colony. These bee species are called solitary bees, meaning that they live alone. Actually, they pair up and they make little families, but they're solitary and they nest in the ground. They dig the cutest little holes and they're in some in wood, decaying wood, but let's call most of them ground nesters. So what they need in your garden, you who are creating me, uh, we who are creating native plant habitat with our native plant gardens, what, what those bees need is bare earth. So to, to apply top dress or not to apply top dress, yes, but always leave some areas of bare earth. Always leave some bare dirt, especially in the sunny spots or in the areas that you think they look the best because you need to have habitat area for the native pollinators. Let's walk around and look at some different types of top dress, leaf litter, forest duff, mulch, organic and mineral as it is applied in different parts of our garden here. Okay, so we have come in under a native oak, a couple hundred years old maybe. On the surface, we see sticks and flakes. Sticks coming off of the branches of the oak tree and leaves that have fallen. As we get a little bit deeper, we start to see where, how it is broken down and it's still chunky. The, the top dress has become compost at this point. And as we get even deeper, it's organic soil. It's a min mineral, it's a blend of both the mineral soil and the organic components that came from this continuous falling of the top dress forest duff leaf litter, which has come down. So this <laughs> is our model. This works every time. It, as, it, as it covers the ground, it preserves moisture beneath. It prevents weed seed from germinating and discourages weed from growing healthy. It allows water to go through it every time it rains or any time that sprinklers go on and air follows the water back in and air can also escape because soils need to breathe in quotes and that's a new topic for another day. But here is 
an example of what this oak tree is doing for itself in order to produce a top dress. Okay, we've come under a manzanita. This one is Arctostaphylus uh, manzanita of the variety St. Helena. And it's been in for several years uh, as a garden plant, even some seedling manzanitas germinating. And what we have is it has created its own mulch. Again, mostly flakes being the leaves. There's some old fruit, the manzanitas themselves, which would be kind of chunky. And then you've got some sticks, which are the twigs that have fallen. And as it breaks down over time, it becomes finer beneath. So the layer right beneath is now beautifully chunky and starting to turn into soil. But don't forget, now here's the surface, just a top dress of, of flakes and sticks with a few chunks turning chunky on its own and then at a deeper level it's in the soil. The, the, the depth here of the all those layers put together is about two inches. Again the model. Unfortunately in our garden world too often this is raked up, oh silly me, blown away and then gathered and hauled off so that there would be bare dirt beneath this manzanita, and then an inferior, if not harmful, mulch is brought in. This is the best you could get. It's also free. Okay, so this is a garden area here at Tree of Life that we've renovated recently. The manzanita, of course, has been in for many years, but these other plants have only been in for a few days. This non-crop area, which is the path, has a top dress, if you will, or at least a compacted layer of decomposed granite with some seashells scattered in just to get you going that direction. This is the chunky imported redwood bark mulch which I mentioned earlier and was applied at about one inch thick on brand new planting in order to achieve all the goals of water retention, moisture retention, weed control, uh, clean good look and healthy plants. So when we look at this right now it looks quite a bit like the natural material that we brought up under the oak and under the sycamore, I'm sorry, under the manzanita. But this is a little bit chunkier, being redwood bark. This is available in the horticultural trade or in bags from different um, sources. And again, it is a byproduct of redwood boards. So we've, at this garden, applied chunky redwood top dress. We've got a non-crop area of decomposed granite. And if we come over here, we have a mound, and this mound has a drier look and has more of a desert feel with the boulders and the rocks, and it's not made of decomposed granite. Decomposed granite is the material on the top, which is this, which would be considered a mineral top dress, because this is a mound of soil. But we have brought in, both for the visual and for the benefit of these plants, about a one inch layer one and a half or so inch layer of uh, decomposed granite on the surface. Here's the native soil beneath. The native soil beneath is nice and moist. Only two inches down, I'm getting some good moisture right there, even though the top dress feels quite dry at this point. It little cake cakes up like this. That's the nature of decomposed granite. It does make a crust like this, but that crust is not to be, uh, don't worry, 
the water still gets through it and it actually is helping lock in that moisture beneath. And many of the uh, native uh, bee species can make their nests in the decomposed granite that um, we have going here. Something is digging a little hole here and here and here and in this little line and, and throwing out the spoils of the soil beneath and making a little den right there. And I have a feeling that might be a native bee species. So it's working. So here's a mineral top dress, decomposed granite, right next to a organic top dress, chunky redwood bark. And you can see that they're telling two different stories, one in the shade of the manzanita, one in what will become more of a desert scape. Behind is native soil. Native soil with native mulch. So here is a, another variety of manzanita and its own top dress leaf litter after years and years of growing right here on the spot. No need to bring anything new into this part of the garden. As far as importing material from foreign source, your best time of year for that would be around May in order to have a new fresh look for summer. And then maybe again, October, November, if necessary, in order to allow the rains to go through it and have a winter period for um, your new top dress. It's more important on a brand new garden to have a top dress if, you, if that's part of your story that you're telling and part of the design than on an established garden because don't forget, the established garden should be time over time making its own mulch and making its own top dress. Um, you don't have to do it twice a year. Try to avoid uh, midsummer because it's too hot and if that top dress material is organic and it's green, meaning not composted, it's gonna generate a lot of heat and you don't want that more uh, organic biological heat from breaking down. Um, the beauty of a top dress like this is that if you follow our recommendation for watering, which is one deep soak about every three weeks, and then refreshing sprinkles throughout the week in the summer months, the deep soak being applied early in the morning infrequently, and the refreshing sprinkles in the late afternoon, early evening, a couple, three times a week, is that when you do a refreshing sprinkle with your hose, five minutes of hose water wetting down the leaves, cooling off the garden, and you get this organic mulch wet, the temperature goes down and it just is beautiful for, for all purposes. It just, it just, plants love it. So don't bring in mulch every time you see some bare dirt. Avoid midwinter because it's raining and it's gonna just float away. Uh, avoid midsummer because of the hot temperatures. So basically kind of late spring, mid to late spring, March, April, May through, I mean, and then again, if necessary, before winter, October, November. And those would be the periods at which you could bring in outside material as needed. Again, tell a story with your garden. Use the top dress to complete the story that you're telling on the theme and the types of plants that you have chosen. Desert, forest, woodland, shade, moist, dry. Carefully select your top dress materials and tailor them to the needs and the use that you have intended for your garden. So don't forget crop or non-crop, organic or mineral. Once organic is chosen, no sticks, strings, flakes, dust, that combination will kill you. Understand how the individual shapes work Think about chemistry, nitrogen especially. Think about physiology and biology. You don't want any pathogens. You don't want any weed seeds. You don't want any salts. That's chemical. That's, that would be your, to, why you would avoid manures. You don't want any pa pathogens, any bad guys. No, no um, plant diseases that come in on diseased wood or on um, putrid trash. 
enjoy. Make putting top dress down as, as an integral part of gardening as planting and tending and watering and pruning and caring for your plant. It's not an afterthought. It, don't blow it out of a big hose out of some gigantic truck and smother everything with it. If you've ever seen that done, you know why I'm cynical. And make sure that um, when you're finished and you look at it like this and you know that you've done not only no harm, but you've actually made the garden a better place. Thanks a lot for your attention for this little uh, uh, treatise called The Low Down Dirt on Mulch. And um, stay tuned. There's always new information coming out of um, every place that we learn in the garden. We're inspired to learn by the beauty of nature and the healing qualities of nature. And so when we engage in these activities, we help nature heal and nature helps us heal. Thank you.